Hello everyone, my name is Jane Kim and I'm from Seoul National University in Korea. Today, I will present Itanos efficient bootstrapping for full nodes on the account-based blockchain. These days, account-based blockchains like Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Solana, and Algorand have become popular. This is because the account-based model supports smart contracts, a tiny program that allows people to program money themselves. Due to the smart contracts, ordinary people can mint uh, cryptocurrencies and their assets and uh, derivatives and many things are uh, minted on the blockchain. However, the account-based model suffers from a huge storage size and long synchronization or bootstrapping time. For example, Ethereum requires 6.9 terabytes and few weeks to catch a current block with archive sync. And it requires 740 gigabytes and few days with fast sync. The most serious overhead of storage size and bootstrapping time is caused by the state try that saves account states. This is because the number of accounts exceeds more than 100 million, and this account builds the try and the storage size becomes the multiple of the number of accounts. So, before we talk about Etanos, let's review Ethereum to learn some background. Ethereum stores each account at the state try of which structure is Merkle Patricia try or MPT. The MPT is the combination of the Patricia try and the Merkle tree. The Patricia try is a tree that uh, stores the data at the leaf of the try and the path of the data is determined by the name of the data. And the Merkle tree is a tree that hashes all the data from the leaf to the uh, root node. So we can uh, determine that, or we can find that uh, if some a little data is changed in the Merkle tree, because the root of the Merkle tree is changed by only a small change of any data in the Merkle tree. So in NPT, the character sequence of an account address determines the path to each account data, like Patricia try. And each node is labeled with a hash value, like a Merkle tree. This MPT is implemented by LabelDB, that each node is stored with this hash as a key. Accessing an account requires multiple hash-based LabelDB accesses, which is the main bottleneck of synchronization. MPT also allows efficient verification. First, it can prove membership with a Merkle proof. For example, we can verify that an account 0x7a1cdf exists in this MPT with a Merkle proof, including branch node 0, extension node 0, branch node 1, extension node 1, and the account, which is represented as v hash 0, v hash 1, v hash 2, v hash 3, and v hash 4, where v is the level db. Second, it can also prove non membership with a void proof. For example, you can verify that an account 0x7a14a0 is not in the MPT with a void proof. Including branch node 0, extension node 0, and branch node 1, which is represented as b hash 0, b hash 1, and b hash 2, since there is no pass to 4 in the branch node 1. By the Merkle proof and the void proof, all the blockchains like Ethereum can verify any transaction or an account is in the blockchain or not in the blockchain. So this technique makes blockchain to build or implement the layer 2 solutions, which, which means that the layer 2 is uh, the solution for the scalability and the users can uh, do something in the layer 2 and that data are summarized to a root of a Merkle tree and the root value is transmitted to the main chain so that uh, the main chain can verify any action occurred in the layer 2 solutions. If a new node wants to join the network, it has to be a full node 
by downloading the blocks and reproducing the current block called the synchronization. A full node is that a node that can verify a transaction itself. This is possible because full node has the full data of the state try and it can access any state of any account. And there are two synchronization processes in Ethereum. The first one is archive sync. Archive sync downloads all blocks and reproduces all state tries from the Genesis block. Archive sync records all the histories of the blockchain, so it takes a huge space and a long time. If you want to access uh, data of a smart contract, and if you want to access the historical data of the smart contract, you have to download the Ethereum with the archive sync. The second one is the fast sync. Fast sync downloads all blocks, but also downloads the state try of the pivot block, that is 64 blocks before the current block, and reproduces only the state tries from the pivot block. The pivot block can be determined by any parameters, but in these days, Ethereum sets the 64 blocks before the current block as a pivot block. Fast sync can reduce the cost of synchronization, but it is still slow because we need to traverse, transmit, and rebuild every node of huge state try, which suffers from intensive disk I.O. To accelerate the synchronization, we first investigated Ethereum data and observed that the most accounts are dormant and only a fraction of accounts are active, as you can see in the figure 2. And about 3% are active for one week and about 5% are active for one month. And we also found that once an account is activated, it's likely to be accessed soon again, as you can see in the table 1. An account is updated in a week with a probability of 76% and in a month with a probability of 89%. And almost all accounts are be updated in 6 months. So, we propose the Thanos that sweeps dormant accounts periodically by an epoch lambda. For example, the lambda can be 40,000 blocks for one week period. We call the last block of an epoch a checkpoint, since it is extremely expensive to traverse the state try to find and remove dormant accounts. Eternal simply creates a new empty try every time a new epoch starts, and fills it with the active accounts used by the transactions in the new epoch. And also the miners. Since the try is initially empty, however, no account is available, so Eternals caches the state try of the checkpoint as well and accesses the cache try to find the state of the account not in the current block. If an account is not in the current try, but in the cache try, copy it to the current try. However, if an account neither in the current try nor in the cache try, it should first be reactivated before it is the sender or a receiver of a transaction. There are two cases. If it is a sender, first restore itself with a restore transaction. If it is a receiver, create a Chrome account as if we can create a new account. Then merge later when it becomes a sender. For the restore transaction, since dormant account has no state, so it cannot pay the fee for the restore transaction. So the restore, the restore transaction should be transmitted by other accounts that is alive in this period because the active account has the state and it can pay the fee for running the restore transaction. So the owner of the dormant account has to pay the fee for other account that sends the restore transaction. This gives the inconvenience for the users, but if the users knows the mechanism of the Eternals, there will be a custody that maintains the user's accounts and the real dormant accounts will be swept to optimize the Ethereum. In Ethereum, when someone sends some value to an arbitrary address that does not exist, a new account for that address is created in the state try. However, we cannot distinguish the 
created account is new or reactivated. So we call the reactivated dormant account as Chrome, which can be a sender of another transaction if it has enough balance. If the Chrome account does not have enough balance, it should transmit a result transaction, which will merge the Chrome account with the original account. To avoid cheatings, a restore transaction includes merkle proofs and void proofs to prove that this is the dormant account and that its last state. Since a merkle proof cannot distinguish between a Chrome state and a restored state, we use the restored flag to prevent an already restored account from behaving as if it is a Chrome account. A valid state generated by a restore transaction can be expressed during a regular expression like this. The regex is represented as a plus bar r plus and v plus and c plus v star and v star. a means active, r means restored, v means the void, and c means the crumb. We found that any sequence of worker proof or void proof satisfies this regular expression. And if a proof sequence of visual transaction does not follow the regex, it is rejected. Through this method, we can reject any irregular sequences to prevent the process of the restoration. Therefore, an attacker has no choice but to follow the regex, but it only generates a correct state, so the attacker cannot attack these restore processes. For synchronization, Itanos downloads state tries of both pivot and the latest checkpoint blocks, and each try is small. This is because Itanos first finds an account state in the current block, and then if the account is not if the account is not in the current block, then it finds the account at the state try of the checkpoint block. So we have to download both tries. And if we omit to download all the transactions before the pivot block, which we call compact sync, we can significantly reduce the storage size and the bootstrapping time. Also, other techniques like DeepoPo, omitting less important block headers by using the super blocks, of which uh, difficulty is much better than other blocks, the bootstrapping cost can be much reduced by reducing the easy blocks, by, by reducing the non-super blocks. And we think that bootstrapping with less than one gigabyte within a few minutes would be plausible for ordinary people. So ordinary people with ordinary devices can download, can easily download the full nodes so they can verify the transaction themselves then the ordinary people cannot be a victim of a financial fraud done by the RPC call or the centralized full nodes. We used the real Ethereum data to evaluate Itanos. We evaluated 300,000 blocks from 7 million blocks to the 7.3 million blocks, where 3.6 million transactions update 4.6 million accounts for two months in early 2019. And the experiment was run on the real gas client. We instrumented gas client version 1.9 to implement Itanus and to compare it with the original gas. And we set the epoch size 40,320 blocks, which is about one week. And the number of resource transactions was 198,000 121. The specification of the host is i79700K, 3.6 GHz CPU, 64GB RAM, 6TB SSD, and the client is i77770, 3.6 GHz CPU, 16GB RAM, 1TB SSD. And we connect the client who bootstrap and the host who provides the bootstrap data via Ethernet to reduce the impact of network fluctuation on synchronization time and the period of failures.
The experimental results show that the total storage sizes for the seventh checkpoint are for fast sync, Ethanos did not reduce the storage size significantly compared to the gas. This is because even the Ethanos reduces the storage size of the trinos by about 600 megabytes. But the resource transactions increases the storage size so that this increase offsets the decrease of the trinodes. But for the compact sync, the total storage size at the seventh checkpoint are 997 megabytes for gas and 374 megabytes for ethanos. Where the state dry size of gas is 831 megabyte and that of ethanos is 220 megabyte. Therefore, the total storage size for compact sync will be under 594 megabytes, which remains almost constant unlike Ethereum that, con that continues to grow. 594 megabytes would be reasonable for a client to bootstrap as a full node. We also measured the synchronization time and found that Ethanos becomes tangibly faster than gas in both fast sync and compact sync. As you can see, the storage size of gas and ethanos for fast sync is almost the same, but the sync time of ethanos is much better than the fast sync. And also for the compact sync, ethanos shows the improved synchronization time compared to the gas. And as you can see, the bootstrapping time for Ethanos compact sync is almost constant over time, so we can fix the sync time for the compact sync and we can expect that Ethanos compact sync can limit the storage size and the synchronization time. So the people can easily bootstrap as a full node to verify a transaction and transmit a transaction and so on. In summary, Ethanos successfully reduced the bootstrapping cost by periodically see external accounts, reviews the state try only with active accounts, and restores dormant accounts when needed. Ethanos enables bootstrapping under 1 GB within a few minutes, which would be plausible for ordinary people. And it will allow occasional online users to be a full node whenever transmitting transactions. So from now on, people do not have to download and maintain the full node. Whenever it wants to, it can fastly download the blocks and do a full node, send a transaction or verify a transaction, then disconnect the internet. And after that, if you want to be a full node again, you can easily and fastly be a full node in a minute with a uh, small devices. That's it and thank you for listening.